Hello, 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 everyone. I will let people start to join in. Um, I just want to welcome you all to today's Instagram Live. I am so excited to be here. I hope that you all had a wonderful, hey, Adrian, a wonderful Tuesday um, and, and a great long weekend. For me, it was amazing. I was able to just relax, hang out with friends and family, which is always a blessing. So I hope you had a great long weekend as well. And again, I hope that you're having a great Tuesday. I am excited that you decided to spend your Tuesday evening with me. We have an amazing guest tonight, but before I get to her, I just want to tell you a little bit about who I am. Some of you may have stumbled upon this Instagram live and you're like, what's going on tonight? Who is Brittany? What is she doing? Well, I have a, um, a YouTube channel called Becoming with Brittany where I encourage, inspire, and motivate women to become all that God has created us to be. And one of the ways that we do this is through sharing our stories, stories of faith, perseverance, setbacks, and victories. And today's guest who's going to share her story is Shaquilla Stewart. And the way we're doing it on IG Live, usually I do pre-recorded interviews and then post them on the YouTube channel later. But we decided to do this as an IG Live because she has some amazing events coming up this month. And I just felt the urgency of putting this information out for you all to hop on and actually attend her events. If you live in Los Angeles, if you don't live in LA, then support her events and just hear more about her ministry. So that's why we're doing it as a live. But after the, the live, make sure you go to Instagram, not right now, afterwards, and subscribe to the channel. Check out um, the other interviews that I've had with some phenomenal women. But today's phenomenal woman that we're going to talk about, again, is Shaquilla Stewart. And I'm just going to read her bio because she's done so much. I don't want to leave anything out. She is an actress, a model, a host, and a certified breakthrough life coach. So Shaquilla got her start in the entertainment industry through theater. She combined her experience in the entertainment industry with her passion to empower women and girls. Her mentorship program, Walk This Way Movement, empowers women and you to rise above and achieve no matter their environment, society, or circumstances. Shaquilla empowers community through her own testimony of overcoming the challenge of the foster care system to become a successful entrepreneur. Today, she's a premier confidence and presence coach helping female entertainers to get grounded in faith, identity, and purpose to develop the confidence needed to experience lasting success in the entertainment industry. She believes how you start in life is not how you finish, and I absolutely love that. So I'm going to bring her in. Again, thank you everyone for joining. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Christy. Hi, Jaren. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring her in, and then we will get started. Okay, wait. There you are. Hey. Hey, beautiful. How are you? I'm doing so good. I'm so excited. I love your voice, girl. You got this. You got this. I What's love up? you. I love you and I, and I thank you for just taking time out of your busy schedule because I know that you do a lot to, uh, to just talk with us today. Absolutely. Um, it's an honor. And again, I'm so grateful. And I just want to know before we start, do I need to bring my video camera down a little bit more or my iPad? A little bit down. So we can okay. see your, your beautiful face. Okay. Is this better? Perfect. perfect. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Shaquilla and I met when I was living in Los Angeles. And we both attended a, we were a background extras for a music video. <laughs> Uh, and it was a great time. It was actually like a jazzy type artist. We were outside and I didn't know anyone except for the, I think our mutual friend invited us from the church that we went to, Katrina. And so I didn't know anyone, but Shaquille was just so welcoming, so easy to talk to. And you actually, I don't know if you remember this, but you said a word of encouragement over my life that I will never forget. It was so powerful. I went home that night and wrote it in my journal. You didn't know like what I was facing, what I was going through, but it was just so powerful and so encouraging. And that's just who you are at the core. You Thank are you. someone who speaks into the lives of people and you do it with boldness and you're obedient and what God has called you to do. So that's who you are at the core. I know that about you, but I'm excited for other people to know that about you as well. So thank oh, you for thank that. You. <laughs> of course. Thank you. And just thank you for just being so humble and just being so welcoming, like, you're just so welcoming. So thank you for creating this platform for women to share their stories and be open and to be able to inspire others as well. So again, I'm so honored. And even as we were praying the other day before we did this call, something broke. I had breakthrough after our prayer. 
mm. because it allowed me to the space to be vulnerable and to be honest. Mm. And that's what this journey is all about, is just being mm -hmm. honest and inspiring mm. others. So thank you for creating that space for women and myself to be able to share our stories in an authentic way. Of course, of course. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. Shahila, you have written multiple books. Um, you're an author. You are an entrepreneur. You're an actress. You're a model. You do so much. And we're going to talk about um, at least one of your books, Chin Up, You Got This, later on. But uh, you didn't wake up just being who you are. You went, through, you went through a lot. And in your book, Chin Up, You Got This, you mentioned that you desired to become an actress. You had a strong passion to become an actress when you moved to L.A., but you also mentioned that you had a hole in your heart and there were voices from the outside that tried to make you feel that you were not worthy enough to achieve your dreams. Take us back to your childhood. Where did, did these feelings of being unworthy come from? So um, I wasn't raised by my parents. And so I was in foster care from ages six to eight. But then um, I was adopted by my great aunt. And so um, when I was nine years old, my fourth grade teacher, I was absent and she told the entire class that I was adopted and that my family wasn't my real family. Mm. And so from that moment on, mm -hmm. it made me think that, hey, this is the way the world sees me. They see me as this foster child. They see me as unworthy. They don't see my gifts. They don't see my talent. They don't think that I'm good enough. So I would have these voices in my mind telling me, you're not good enough. You don't have what it takes, et cetera. But funny story, um, I discovered that I shared the same birthday as Oprah. And I was just <laughs> like, you know what? I share the same birthday as Oprah. I'm going to be something in life. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be something. But I'll tell you this. Even after I became successful, when I would fail, those lies would keep coming back in my mind like, well, maybe your teacher was right. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough. You don't have what it takes. You're not worthy. You know, it's just, just the lies of the enemy. Mm -hmm. But once I found my identity in Christ, and I know it sounds cliche, but you constantly have to get that word in your heart and understand that your value is not based on your circumstances, your situations, your parents, where you came from, where you grew up or your value isn't based on your success either. Right. Your value is rooted in Christ and you being right. a son or a daughter of God. And that's the truth. Right. I'm glad you mentioned that. And what's so interesting about your story is you were inspired because you were connected to someone who we all know, um, her birthday, right? And someone who has done great things, her birthday. And so at that time, that's what you needed to, to keep you going. And it's so powerful, like you said, once we know that we are connected to the, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we know that we are connected to God, then that is powerful. Like, that is what we need to move forward. And so that's just so interesting how that is what, what fueled you. And I can see, like, hey, we share something similar, you know? So I yeah, because it was like, you know what, I have something with someone, I have something in common right. with someone who is successful. Right. So that just made me say, you know what, God, I know what you put in my heart is real. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is God had already put those dreams in my heart, but mm -hmm. it was the enemy that right. tried to plant those seeds of confusion and unworthiness right. to make me think that just because you're not raised with your parents, doesn't mean that you can't be successful in right. life. And if Oprah is successful, then why not me? Then why can't I be successful too, right? Yeah. Um, and one thing that you mentioned too is that you felt that if you became an actress, that that would be the remedy to fill the void that you had in your heart. But then you started to realize that actually only God could fill that void. Yeah, because see, so from that seed planted, it's like this. Well, I have to be successful because I don't want people to see me as a foster child. Mm. I don't want the world to see me as an orphan. So I'm going to be so successful so that they can see Shaquilla as a superstar, as this model, as this actress. So when people see me there, that's going to go away. They're no, they're no longer going to see me as this girl who wasn't raised with her parents. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, even if I was raised with my parents, I was still going to be all those amazing things. Mm -hmm. Because right. when God gives you with something, he just gives you that gift. Mm -hmm. 
And so, and that's a lot of pressure. And that's why I really speak to youth who are in foster care because it's a lot of pressure on yourself to try to break these generational curses, to try to break statistics. And because the truth of the matter is you're worthy no matter what situation you're at right now. Right. Although I live in Hollywood now, I'm still just as valuable as I was when I was in the foster care. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm it's still the same. My value didn't change because my status changed mm -hmm. or my career changed or I got a diploma or I broke a statistic. I was still just as valuable when I was in foster care as I am now. Right. And so that was the lesson that I'm so grateful that God allowed me to receive. Mm hmm. Right. And through, so what prompted you to write Chen Up? Well, you know what? Oh my gosh. When I came to Los Angeles, California from Chicago, girl, so much. My life was like going up and down, up and down, right? Mm -hmm. So 20, what, maybe, I don't know, 2015, um, not 2015, 2010, actually. Wow. 2010. Mm -hmm my mother passed away, mm. my adopted mother. Mm -hmm. I was 26 years old. I was an artist at the time, really pursuing acting and modeling hard. But when my mother passed away, I had to change my life completely. And mm. I had to actually adopt my 10-year-old brother. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, my mind was not on no kid or none of that. Right. I just, my mind wasn't there because I was an artist at the time. But when I tell you, I stepped up to the plate and I did it. Mm. I was at school meetings. I was a single parent sitting in the classroom like, okay, like what homework he has, going to basketball games. How old were you again? How old were you? I was 26. 26, wow. And I know when I say 26, a lot of people will be like, well, that was old. But when you think about that, that is, that's still young. Mm -hmm. To, that's you know, it. follow, to coming from being an artist too and making it all about you. Yeah. And then having to, in one day, Pain. Get in front of a lawyer and adopt a kid. Right. right? Regardless of how old you are. If you're seeing, if you're, if you don't have kids and then you're just, you know, doing what you want to do in life and then, you know, 26 or 36 and then all of a sudden you have a child that is unexpected and you have to step into that role of parenting that child. That's a lot. And it death, because I had to plan my mother's funeral. It was just mm -hmm. so much on me at once. Mm -hmm. And but God was with me. Mm. He was with me. Mm -hmm. And my mother was so amazing in the spirit that a week before she passed away, I went to the hospital to see her. And she's like, Shaquilla, you have to let me go. And I was like, uh-oh. And she was like, but I'm going to always be with you. Mm. Because you know God. And she said, um, I want you to take care of your brother and sister. And she goes, it's no purpose of living life if you're not going to have any joy. Those were her last words to me. Like, Shaquilla, you have to live a life of joy. Have joy. Don't live hmm. like you have to have joy. And so after that, I knew, I was like, okay, I called all her friends. I'm like, guys, go to the hospital. I know mom is about to pass away. But to make a long story short, um, my brother ended up going to college, you know, he turned mm -hmm. 18, went to college. My sister got married 2017 and I was like, okay, God, it's my time to right. go to LA. Now it's my time to continue my dream. Mm -hmm. And so when I got here, I was like ready, like, okay, I'm in LA. My dream about to come true. Mm -hmm. And I had started a movement in Chicago called walk this way while I was helping women right. build confidence mm -hmm. walking in heels and just inspired by my story. Mm -hmm. And one day I was at home and things weren't working well. And I was like, well, God, why aren't things moving fast? Like you told me And the Holy spirit clearly told me because you haven't surrendered to the call of ministry over your life. Mm. And I was like, what? Just being honest. Mm -hmm. I was like, God, I did not move to Los Angeles for ministry. Like I was just being honest. I was like, God, I could have stayed in Chicago. Like, huh? And so he was saying, Shaquilla, you telling women they overcome and walking in heels, but you leaving me out. Mm. Right. Wow. He was like, you know, you didn't overcome foster care that way. Mm -hmm. 
I know, right? It's funny. Exactly. But I'm telling you, people will believe in me because it sounds cute. We overcoming obstacles, walking in heels. You you got this, girl. It's so cute and it's fun, right? And I'm like, God, you gave me this idea. Mm -hmm. But I had to humble myself. Right. It was a humility that I wasn't walking in. Mm -hmm. Because... No, I didn't overcome foster care walking in heels. No, I didn't overcome my mother passing away walking in heels. No, I didn't overcome adopting my brother walking in heels. My mind, Jesus kept my mind. And I was, I was ashamed I wasn't telling women that I was keeping that out. Okay. So I really had to go through a process. So when I say chin up, you got this, it's really telling people who go through hard things. Right. Be encouraged. And with that, Shakila, I'm glad you mentioned the title. But before I get to that, quick, one thing you mentioned is how your the importance of surrendering your plans to God's plans. You had a plan to come to LA. You, in your mind, you had all of these things that you were, that you were going to do, which were great. But you talk about the importance of surrendering your plans to God's plans. And surrendering is not easy. When that word comes up, like most people cringe, like, why do I have to surrender? But when you know that God has a bigger plan for your life than you could ever imagine, then it makes it it makes it more easier to say, okay, God, I'm gonna give this over to you, which takes practice, like you learned that over time. But talk about the importance of surrendering your plans to God's plans. Girl, I'm not gonna lie, it was hard for me. Like because I was like, so first when I moved here, you know, my family from Chicago, they like, okay, girl, get it. You got to go down there and get it. You know how it is. You about to be so, famous. Yeah. I'm about to see you on the bit screen. What? Like it's over. And I'm like, God telling me to do this too. God got me. He's about to come. I'm getting all these prophetic words. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, you are an accelerated path and just right. everything. Just ready. Mm -hmm. So when God told me that, I was like, God, you want me to get let go of my dream? I waited 15 years to move to LA. It's my time. When I get to LA, God, this is the place where dreams happen mm -hmm. in entertainment. And now you want me to let that go, put it down. Girl, that was hard. Yeah. But it was a couple at my church. Oasis, our church. Mm -hmm. They had a testimony about how they surrendered what they wanted for God. Mm. I met with them because I was like, y'all, I don't know if this God is speaking to me. This might just be me. Mm -hmm. And so I met with them and I just came home and I prayed and God gave me the story about Abraham and called it Abraham faith and how Abraham waited on his son for 20 years, right? The promised child. And then God said, give it back. Mm -hmm. And so what it really was, was God wanted me to know that my fulfillment was coming from him and not my dream coming true. Right. Wow. So he, he was actually protecting me to know, hey, don't think when your dream come true that so much fulfillment is going to come from that. Mm -hmm. Because your fulfillment is not coming from your dream coming true. Mm -hmm. It's coming from me. Right. It makes me think about the story of Anna, how she prayed for a son, and it was God's promise that she received. Um, but then she had to surrender over to God. You know, and it's like so many times in the Bible we see, like you said, with Abraham, of how like we pray and we pray and we pray and we got that answer. We got we got the promise. But for me, your story shows me to not hold on so tight to what we want. Like, even if it's something that we know that God has given us, don't hold on so tight to it to where all of a sudden it becomes about us again and not God and what he wants to do with it, what he wants to do with our lives. And I hope that encourages people who are watching too to know if you feel that pressing on your heart that it's time to maybe take a pivot from where you were originally walking to maybe take a pivot um, to trust in God because what he's going to do in your life is going to blow your mind. You know, we can't fathom it. So you're... That part of your story is, um, you know, so so timely and so powerful, I feel, for me. Thank you. Thank you. Really? Just thank you for the, and the encouragement in that, too, because God, that's what I'm saying. God really wanted me to break through inwardly because me, I was wearing a facade, putting on a mask, right? Mm -hmm. I could still hide behind my dream. I could hide behind my gift. I could hide behind my talent. But he's like, Shaquilla, it's girls who have gone through foster care. It's youth who've been in foster care, who've been raised without their parents. I need you to go tell them that I didn't forget about them. Mm -hmm. mm. That I love them. Let them know how you overcame. Mm -hmm. Share you your know, story. 
Yeah, okay. and I didn't want to share that at first. Mm -hmm. So God had to really do a lot of breaking and just it was a walk of humility for sure. Okay. But it was one of the best moments of my life. Okay. Sure. Okay, so you moved to LA and you you have these dreams. God is saying, actually I want you to go into ministry. And the way that looks for you is sharing your story and still doing walk this way movement but including me in it and share about me and share your story, correct? Yes. Um, and then, so your book comes, Chin Up, You Got This. So just to talk about the origin of your book, which we've kind of talked about before. But when you hear that title, it's easy to think like, oh, that's cute. Chin Up, You Got This. Like, oh, okay, you just got out of a relationship. Chin Up, You Got This. You just, you know, got fired from your job. Chin Up, You Got This. Like, no, it, it sounds cute, but it is so much deeper than that. It is so powerful because it comes from your story. And I hear how you were... Um, in the class, you were taken to class and your teacher kind of exposed you in, in a way that you said, you know, everyone knew you were in foster care at that point. And you said in your book, having to go back to class while visiting my grandmother and being in foster care were all chin up, shoulders back moment, moments. So having to go back to class while visiting my grandmother and being in foster care were all chin up, shoulders back moments. Talk about, like that is, that is really the foundation of your book is so much deeper than a cute title. Yes. And I'm so glad that you took the time to read it and just get the questions, right? You know, this is powerful because, so when you think about this, my family, I came from a very loving family, but then I go to foster care, you know, and while you're in foster care, I had a great home. It was a beautiful home. So I can't even lie. God has been faithful to me. It was a very great family. Mm -hmm. I, very great family and you went just so people know because your your parents were really young when they had you right so they, my my mother my mom yes my mom was young and my grandmother took me in as a okay. kid okay and so then I end up going to um foster care from six to eight but they let you go visit your family okay because they want you to get back with your family ultimately mm-hmm and so during the school day, I would go visit my grandmother sometimes. But you know, if I see her, I'm, I don't want to leave her. Right. That's my mother. That's my baby. Like, I don't want to leave her. Mm -hmm. And then the caseworker take you back to class. Mm -hmm. And oh, man, I used to show out at times just crying. But then I had to come to a moment and say, Shaquille, you, I literally had to tell myself, okay, Shaquille, you got to be strong. You can't act up in school or you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. but it's so many kids who are in foster care right now that don't know how to articulate that. Mm -hmm. And they think these kids just being bad and they're not, you can't focus in class when you are thinking about where your mother at. Yeah. That's a hard thing. So that's why I'm saying like God gave me the strength mm -hmm. to be able to sit in class and comprehend and read and write and be creative. Mm -hmm. Although my heart was hurting. Right. So that definitely was like a chin up, shoulders back, like mm -hmm. happy face, like you got this, Kiki, like, but you got it through Christ. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because even, you know, I share this in my book before I got adopted by my aunt. Like after those incidents would happen with me coming home crying, I got on my knees. I was like, God, please send me back home to my grandmother. Like I want to go home. Mm -hmm. And so my great aunt adopted me, which, you know, that was my introduction to faith and me knowing in the time of trouble, yep. God, this mm -hmm. me again, mm -hmm. I know you with me because I'm just thinking about that. Like he's so faithful. Mm -hmm. He's just so faithful that man, he's just so faithful mm -hmm. that as a kid, I knew I was safe because I knew he was there with me. Right. You know, when my parents weren't or nobody was there, like he was just with me all the time. So again, with my aunt passed, you know, my adopted mom, I knew, okay, God, what's next? Like, it's me and you again. Like, what are we about to do? Right. You know, how are we going to walk this out again? But he's always been with me. So it's just, that's amazing. So amazing. So it's like, I better tell, I got to tell other people like, girl, if God was with me when I was a kid, like he helped, he can help you too. He kept my mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I, yeah, I, and I believe that those who, 
may be listening and maybe their story isn't about adoption, but it may, it may be filled with rejection. It may be filled with a lot of pain. Your story is encouraging women to know that he's with you. He hears your prayer. Sometimes you can pray, and you mentioned this in your book too, prayer is what got you through. Sometimes you can pray and you think, am I being heard? Like, does God really hear me or really care? He cares, and he hears you, and you are a testament of that. You are definitely a testament of that. Yeah, girl, say that again. That's oh, exactly what, that's exactly what we need, you yeah. know, people need to know because Sometimes we think it's by our works that God come through for us. Mm, mm. <laughs> right. When I was a little kid, didn't know nothing, but God. Wow. God helped, helped me. So, you know, I couldn't, you know, I, I didn't have any strength of my own. He just, right. he, he favored me. You didn't even have the words. You didn't know the words at that age, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, that's that's so powerful, Shaquilla. I love that. And you um you continue to empower women today through your story. We talked about Chin Up, you got this, that book. You also have another book called Um Favor and Two French Break. We're gonna have to do a part two because I know we can't get through all of what I'm gonna talk about today. But really briefly, Favor and Two French Braids is more so about your journey from Chicago to Los Angeles. Talk to us about that type of why Favor and Two French Braids, which I love by the way. Yes, yeah, so really fast. Girl, I just had so much pride growing up. I don't know why, but I was just doing too much. Because uh -huh. even though, like I said, I was in foster care, I still had a very good life. Mm -hmm. So I was still doing too much at times. But when I came to L.A., you know, I wrote the book Favor and Two French Braids because my job fell through. And all I have nothing. All I had was God's favor. And I was rocking my natural two French braids. Hey. <laughs> and he still came through for me. So it's just a testament to women to let you know, hey, girl, you don't have to show up perfect mm. to get the job done or do the things that God has called you to do. Right. You know, his strength is made perfect in your areas of weakness. Yes. So it's like walk in that humility and be okay with saying, I don't have it all together. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't have it all together, that's when God show up and show out in your life. Mm hmm and that's not easy nope. to do that, especially with women, because there's so much pressure on us to be it and be perfect and have great posture and just everything. But that favor and two French braids represent, hey, I'm enough. That's all when you I don't got it. He's enough within me. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. And that's powerful, too, because it is easy to count yourself out because you feel like I'm not 100 percent ready. You know, like you said, I'm not perfect. You will never be. And once you realize that our source is perfection, if God is our source, he's perfection and lives in us, he'll give, he'll give us everything that we need. So I love that you were walk, rocking your protective style with favor um, and doing what God told you to do. So I love that. Yes, and he came through. Like, he just really came through for me because... Um, oh, sorry about that because so um yeah because like where i'm from we just being a diva just always long uh -huh. hair, just just being a diva so this was a very humbling thing to just go out to events rocking my fridge braids but it was just like god wanted me to know daughter you enough you don't mm -hmm. have to put on a show you don't have to put on a facade you are enough just the way you are and i'm gonna provide for you because you're my daughter so mm -hmm. it's just a testament for women to tap into their identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, you're right. Someone said, rocking the protective style with favor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, and so in your, in your book, you have a devotional called The One Pearl. And I want to talk about that really quick because it has to do with your events. Then we'll get to the events that you're going to host this month. So what is the world One Pearl Movement? So the One Pearl Movement is, um, so I sell pearl necklaces to let women know that they are the one pearl that God fought for to give them value. Mm -hmm. And that when God sees you, he doesn't see your circumstances or mistakes. He sees value. So this pearl necklace is a reminder that when God sees you, he sees your value. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And uh, so your Walk This Way movement event will, and it's surrounded around the one pearl in a way as well, your Walk This Way movement event. 
Well, so um, the Walk This Way movement, that's my company. And so the One Pearl is actually an initiative that we just launched. I love and it. so um, Saturday, July 16th, okay. we are doing a night of healing and deliverance for women. Wonderful. And specifically women in business, because I wanted to create a safe space for women in business to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. To walk they, rock they French braids. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you know, to let go of just some of the things that they've been dealing with. It's not going to be no social media, no cameras, no, no anything. Just mm -hmm. a safe place for them to come and have an encounter with Christ to know how valuable they are. Mm -hmm. And so I, I work with a lot of women coaching. And a lot of the times, just being honest, what kind of hinder our growth is our esteem and dealing with the wrong relationships. Okay. That kind of, the relationships kind of hinder us. And so it's really bringing women together to help them get released from those unhealthy relationships so that they can walk forward and become all God has called them to be. Okay. Um, awesome. And so can people still register for that event? Yes. So okay. register, you can go to shaquillastewart.com okay. or you can go to my Walk This Way Movement page or you can go to my Shaquilla Stewart page as well and look in the link tree and you can sign up there or you can um, put it in the search for Eventbrite as well. So it's so many different ways that you can get it or you can DM me as well. But we're definitely still, we, it's definitely still open for women to come, a safe space for you to be vulnerable so that you can get the tools to build self-esteem, positive relationships, um, you know, walk away from unhealthy relationships, but also live a life filled with joy. Okay, great. So that's July 16th, and people can still sign up right now if, and if they live in Los Angeles, or you can fly there if you really Absolutely. want to come, on, come through. <laughs> yes, actually, one of our speakers are flying in from Chicago. So, okay, yes. Okay, yes. so um, they can go there, and then also you have a book signing for Chin Up, You Got This, which we talked about that book, on July 23rd, what can people expect from that book signing event? Well, so I'm so excited that you asked that. So the book signing is so amazing. It's going to be at the Grove at Barnes & Nobles, and it starts at 11 a.m. July 23rd. And mm -hmm. I am dedicating that book signing to teen girls in foster care, and I'm going to do my signature Chin Up, You Got This workshop. And so oh. that's the cool part about the book is that I have a confidence training workshop that goes along with Chin Up, You Got This. So we're going to do some affirmations, some posture technique. Like, it's going to be filled with women empowerment, encouragement, but also letting these teen girls know you're going to walk this way towards self-worth, your dreams, and your purpose. We out here fighting for you. We see you. We love you. Mm -hmm. We love you, and we know that you can make it. We want to be a testament to pull out what's in them so that they can move forward and become all that they can be as well. Okay, so for all ages, yes, uh, young adults, adults, and can go there. They can register. That they can just show up. Can they yep, show just show up? up, show up. And if you can't show up, tell a family member about it. If you want to support a teen girl in foster care by giving her a book, you can go to my website at shaquillastore.com and purchase a book for her. Anytime you purchase anything from us, a percentage of it go to teen girls who are in foster care and also teen girls who are incarcerated as well, because we want to give everybody hope and let them know you got this and you can mm -hmm. overcome any obstacle that comes your way. Mm -hmm. Great. And so that's great. Cause I was going to ask how can people support if they don't live in LA so they can definitely go to your website and buy a book. Um, and I love that. So I am going to, I have a little, well, we're going to wrap it up and then I have a little surprise at the end um, for those who are watching, but to wrap it up, what is one word of encouragement you would share with someone who's maybe watching and they feel um, they're struggling to pursue their dreams because they're dealing with doubts of feeling unworthy? What would you share with them? You know what? I would share with them, honestly, I would tell them get around the right community. Mm. I would tell you got to get around the right people because when you are around the right people, they're going to see things with you, within you that you can't see in yourself. And they're going to speak light to those dreams that you can't see yourself. And then also, too, they gonna, they'll correct some things. That's off. But they'll also encourage you, give you love. You can be honest with them, you know, about, hey, I'm feeling this way about I'm not feeling good enough. I'm not feeling like I have what it takes. But I would say my community was a game changer in my life that propelled me forward. 
Mm -hmm. That's really good. Community. Community is so important. And I feel that with the pandemic, it was so easy to get out of community, you know, and for me specifically church, like I was watching it online and I really started to feel that missing piece of a church community. So um, like I had my friends I could call, but just having that church community was so important. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Great advice, Shaquilla. Thank you again for just sharing your testimony, for being vulnerable today. I know that um, what you've shown me is the importance of being vulnerable and sharing your story. I, I want to do a giveaway. I want to okay. give away, for those who are watching, you can put in the chat. We can do it that way. Um, or you know what? It's probably better if you DM me. DM me. So the first, I will say, three people to DM me who want to go to the conference, who live in L.A. The conference is on July 16th, right? July 16th. Um, just let me know you want to go to the conference, and I will pay for your ticket. Also, um, for the book, if you um, want Chin Up, You Got This, the first three people to let me know. But And then I'll get you the book. So that's six people, just DM me, and I will definitely, I would love to pour into her ministry. And for those who want to be a part of it, I would love to pour into you. And then if I get you the book and you live in L.A., make sure you go to the book signing so you can get it signed by Shaquilla. So um, I just want to be a blessing to people because, Shaquilla, you've been a blessing to me and us tonight. I just thank you again for uh, for sharing your story. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored. I don't know what to do, but <laughs> I'm, I'm just so, I feel so special. And like, like I said, when you have moments like this and calls like this or talks, it affirms you. Mm. It let me know, Shaquilla, you on the right path. Like, keep going. Because I'm going to tell you, just because I say, chin up, you got this, doesn't mean I don't have my days. Because you still have to walk this stuff out. Right. You still have to walk it out. And that's why you need community. Yep. Because so, your community going to help you walk it out. Yes, you're right. They're going to keep pushing you when you want to stop. Yeah. Like, you mentioned you were going to do this. Uh, I've, been, I've been waiting. You know, when are you going to start? So you're right. You are right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Shaquille, I wish you the, the best with everything, with your events. And, you know, I'm always praying for you and here for you, supporting you. So just thank you again. All right. Thank you. I love you so much. Love you, too. All right. Blessings. Okay. Bye. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. This was an amazing conversation. I needed this myself. I hope that you were as blessed by our conversation as I was. I look forward to seeing you become all that God has created you to be as you continue to walk in your dreams and your purpose. Remember to head on over to uh, my YouTube channel, Becoming with Brittany, to check out more episodes. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.